Hi all, Steve here. You may have heard in the news or read online about a new chatbot which is causing a great stir in education and other areas, ChatGPT. There's a lot of excitement and a great deal of anxiety surrounding it. This video takes a look at that very chatbot and how it can help us in our day to day work. However, if you feel as though you already have enough systems and websites to deal with, feel free to skip this video entirely. When you're ready and have time to take a look at this new technology, it'll still be there. With that out of the way, we have used chatbots in the college before. You might have come across the call-in system. That provided a set of frequently asked questions and answers. You're most likely familiar with search engines like Google. You ask a question and the search engine finds web pages it thinks match your request. This new chatbot is an evolution of these types of technologies. You ask a question using natural language and the chatbot creates a brand new answer there and then using all of the information it's been trained to access. You can ask for advice, ask it to write a poem for you or even computer code. The possibilities are endless. But how can this help us in our day-to-day -day work in college? Let's ask the OpenAI chatbot to introduce itself and tell us how it thinks it could be used in an education setting. A chat is a computer program designed to simulate conversation with human users. It can be used to answer questions, provide customer service, or even teach lessons. In the education field, chatbots have opened up a world of possibilities. They can provide personalized, on-demand help to students, aid teachers in managing their classrooms, and help people learn new skills faster. For example, a chat could help a student learn a new language by providing them with personalized feedback and support. It could also provide teachers with effective tools for assessing student performance and helping them identify areas for improvement. By leveraging the power of artificial intelligence and natural language processing, chatbots can help improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the educational experience. At the end of the day, the goal of using chatbots in education is to provide a more personalized and engaging learning experience. So that's a brief overview of what a chatbot is and how it can be used in education. Welcome back. That was OpenAI's chatbot introducing itself. Throughout this video, I'll be using OpenAI's chatbot to produce the examples, although other chatbots are available. There's a link in the video description. You can sign in using Google or Microsoft or make up your own account. You should know that this chatbot isn't free to use forever, so how do you use it? Well, when you're logged in and the playground loads, you just start typing questions like this. Although there were many suggested uses in that introduction, many were quite high level concepts. Let's pick a few areas where this chatbot could help us in our work now and look at some possible limitations. Chapter links are in the description if you want to jump straight to one of the sections. 1. Creating questions. 2. Providing ideas or themes. 3. Producing short written texts. 4. Writing computer code and five, some limitations of chatbots. Creating questions. Designing good questions is challenging, but chatbots can help by creating a selection of questions, and in some cases model answers within a few seconds. We can also use these questions as a template or inspiration for our own questions. For example, can you suggest some test maths questions for student nurses in the UK? There are some good suggestions here, but what about the answers? Can you include the answers? It's easy to see how this type of interaction could be very useful in creating pop quizzes or even some assessment material. 
Of course, you should check the accuracy of the questions and answers yourself, as this chatbot can quite confidently produce information which is wrong. Another use case is to generate ideas and themes to use in your own writing. Let's see some examples. Can you provide some guidance to help me write a reflective essay on my work this week as a care worker? Can you produce a set of paragraph headings which would be suitable for a detailed computer game review? This shows us that the chatbot can be a useful tool for generating prompts to assist both you and your students. The results can be used as a starting point for your own work if they don't fit your needs exactly. Section 3. Producing short texts. It's been suggested by some online sources that technology like chatbots can be used to cheat in your college work. There are a couple of links in the description to articles discussing this issue. In each article it's also pointed out that although the systems will produce an essay for you, the quality of essays produced is not particularly good. If you know the writing style of your students it should be easy to spot an essay which isn't their work. Another limitation of the OpenAI chatbot is that it cannot produce reliable references within an essay, often pointing to incorrect or non-existent sources. If you require references in essays, you're unlikely to get reliable help from this chatbot at this point in time. It should also be pointed out that OpenAI chatbot can't do a plagiarism check on text it created itself. You may remember that I created two short essays about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy for Moodle Monday videos using OpenAI. I re-entered the text some weeks later and asked the chatbot, did you create this text? And the bot replied, no, it was created by Douglas Adams. I also submitted both essays to Turnitin during the creation of those videos. Turnitin reported minimal similarity. The essays were indeed original. Anyway, here are a couple of examples of short text produced by AI and the questions used to generate them. Can you write a 150 word summary of the book Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for an online magazine? Or for a slightly different view of the same text, can you summarise the main themes of the novel Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde? Now for a bit of fun, how about a treasure trail set in Stranraer? Can you create a treasure trail around landmarks in the town of Stranraer, Scotland? I can't be certain that this is a usable trail. I think you might need a car or bicycle to complete this one. It's a useful starting point though. Section 4, writing computer code. Another quite extraordinary ability of this chatbot is its ability to write computer code for you. You might be tempted to skip this part of the video, you just never know. Maybe you need to use Excel to compare columns and numbers and you don't know how to write a formula. You don't have to know anything about coding to try this. You tell the chatbot what you want the program to do and it will try to comply. Here's an example. Could you write an Excel formula that tests if a cell is greater in value or less than 100 and displays higher if it is and lower if not? This isn't a bad attempt, although the chatbot has chosen cell A2 as its test for some reason. You could adapt this to your own requirements. Can you write some Python code to simulate throwing two dice where the user should be able to press the spacebar to throw again? This code didn't work for me because I'm using a Mac and one of the Python libraries is Windows only. So I asked for a shell script instead, which should run on the Mac. Can you write a shell script for an Apple Mac to simulate throwing two dice? Where the user should be able to press the spacebar to throw again.
This worked to show the dice throws, but the spacebar didn't work. Not bad though, this could easily be altered to do what was needed. Section 5 – Limitations of Chatbots The OpenAI chatbot was trained in 2021 and has no access to the internet, so it's unable to respond to current affairs questions. This could be problematic if you're working on anything related to legislation. You often have to finesse your question to get the best responses from the bot. For example, you may ask for a set of suggested questions, only to find they're too easy for the target audience. You would need to ask the chatbot to produce some more questions, only this time, make them more challenging, more suitable for high school age students and so on. As has been pointed out earlier, the chatbot is unable to provide plagiarism checks on the text it produces. It's therefore up to ourselves to identify suspicious submissions. I hope this brief tour of the possibilities of chatbots has been interesting. At the least, I hope it gave you a few ideas about things you could ask it yourself. If you have any good ideas or have found some interesting things to ask the chatbot, leave a comment below. As always, if you have any questions about the issues in this video, contact us in the learning and teaching team. See you in the next video.